Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. Now what I have for you today is a video on my top 10 military pocket survival items. Items that are either general issue or things we can pick up at the surplus store or come in military survival kits that we can throw in our pockets to enable survival out in the wild. Stand by. Now that first item is going to be our commando wire saw. This is a great piece of kit because it is an actual commando wire saw and it comes in a lot of older generation military survival kits. We can coil this up, place it in our pocket, and it comes with a spare blade that we can use to harvest material if the first blade breaks. And a couple different ways we can use this. The first one, like last video, is creating toggles and hand sawing material harvesting it from the landscape. We can also create just a simple bow frame for our commando wire saw. And then once we have that frame built, all we have to do is slide the rings over top of each end of our bow, creating our bow saw, and then we can go harvest material from the landscape. The best thing about this saw is its spiral nature for that cutting surface. We can use this to actually cut metal, which is what it was designed for. We can demonstrate it as such, taking our anvil and hammering a nail into that anvil. We can then begin sawing into that material or that nail, and eventually we will get through that nail, cutting through metal with our commando wire saw. This is a great piece of kit, once again, to have in our pockets to cut through not only natural material from the area, but also from metal material that we may need to harvest and improvise, creating different tools and helping us survive out in the wild. The next item is going to be the Aviator Spark Light. This is a fire kit designed for aviators and for individuals who may be isolated behind enemy lines and have to get a fire going very quickly. All it's made up of is just a simple sparking device like the top of a normal commercial lighter without the fuel and then it comes with its own tinder, about eight tinder tabs made up of flammable material that we can use to get a fire going. We just pull out that tinder, fluff it up, take our spark light and hit it. We'll light that tinder, get a fire going, and then we just add our material on to create our survival fire. There are a lot of different things we can use for trapping and for hunting, and especially for creating passive traps around our area that we're trying to survive to attempt to go after some game and increase the likelihood of actually catching game and feeding ourselves in a wilderness survival scenario. And one of those things we can carry is wire. We have the old school wire where we have the training yellow wire and the actual green use wire for trip wires. But we also have the modern version of that, which is just a smaller spool of the wire itself. The gauge is about 24 gauge wire, similar to that of picture hanging wire but this is great for actually constructing snares we can cut off a hunk of that wire and then from one end we just wrap it twice around a stick once we have that done all we have to do is spin the stick until our wire is wrapped around itself break the stick and then once we break that stick we'll have our self-locking snare set up and we just take the running end from the other side of the wire run it through that lock and we have just a simple snare ready to go that we can set up with a ground stake or a spring pole very easy one thing that is general issue for a lot of military personnel especially combat arms is going to be that face paint so you can veg up out in the wilderness and attempt to blend into your surroundings. But this camo face paint compact is actually a multi-tool in that we can use it not only for evasion and camouflaging ourselves, we can use that mirror as a signaling mirror and as a hygiene device, but we can also use the face paint inside the compact as a flame extender. With a simple piece of cotton like this tampon, we can just gather up some of that face paint, mush it into the cotton fibers, and then take out our knife, take out our ferro rod, hit that cotton with some sparks, it will ignite, and the paraffin wax and petroleum jelly inside the face paint will actually help extend the life of that flame long enough for us to actually get a fire going, especially in bad weather where everything's wet and humid and hot today. Cutting tools are going to be the next item on our list. Cutting tools can go easily into our pockets, whether we purchase them off the shelf like a multi-tool out of the PX, or if we have survival knives and small multi-tools that come inside of our military survival kit, like this demo knife that came inside a USMC kit that I have. With that demo knife, it's still a viable cutting tool, although we have better technology now like the multi-tool, but we can still take that demo knife and the two main tools we want off of that besides the can opener, bottle opener, and the screwdriver are going to be that main blade and then that reamer or awl. This is similar to an old school Boy Scout knife, only it's all metal. 
But with this demo knife, we can take that blade and still create fine shavings for starting a fire. We can carve with it. We can do everything we need to in a wilderness survival situation with that small blade. It is exceptionally strong. On top of that, we have that reamer or that awl that gives us the ability to fashion different tools that we may need out in survival and especially in bushcraft. So this is a tool that cannot be overlooked that can go in our pockets, just a simple folding knife. The better option to have is a multi-tool or maybe even a folding knife on our person. This Super Tool 300 that we can purchase off the shelf inside the PX or the shop at is available to military personnel and is a heavy duty multi-function knife that we can use. It has a main blade, it has a saw, it has the reamer or the awl, and it also has pliers we can use to manipulate material. But this is a great tool to have that fits inside our pocket. A fishing kit is too easy to throw inside our pockets. One like this one from a U.S. Marine Corps survival kit, the 91 model. We can take this small tin, throw it in our pockets, whether we're doing freshwater fishing or saltwater fishing, whether we're from a boat or the shoreline, we can still fish. And this has all the same items in it that we can use for big fish and smaller fish. Inside this kit, we have plenty of different hooks, improvised materials such as safety pins and needles that we can use not only for repair but also for improvisation and then we have all sorts of hooks different lines as well as snare wire and again that commando wire saw that can be used to harvest material to create basic tools off the landscape things like cane poles or in this case we can create a simple hobo reel by cutting off a section of material, wrapping some line, and then adding a hook, a bobber, and some bait to it. And then we have our fishing implements ready to go and hit the water. We've had a lot of water recently, so the water is just a little bit higher, but the fish are jumping today. And we can go out and actually test out some of our survival kit items, a simple hobo reel with some line and hook and our bait, throw it out there, and we can pull in fish to feed ourselves in survival. Cross-loading items on our person or in our clothing is incredibly important for survival. That way, if we happen to lose our jacket or lose our rucksack, we still have items in our pockets that can be used for survival. One thing that can help us do that is just a simple cash belt. We can use this cash belt to hide survival kit items in it. You can be like Morris Kohansky, where we place saw blades in our cash belt and then bring those out to the woods with us. Or we can just have simple items that can help us escape and evade, things like a compass or a small button compass to find cardinal directions, as well as a small cuff key to to get out of handcuffs and escape. I will never forget the POW who came to brief us in our SEER class. He was a Kiowa pilot who escaped and evaded in 11 days in the Vietnam jungle and was able to finally get rescued via signaling mirror by alerting search and rescue aircraft with the flashes from that mirror reflecting the sun's rays. So signaling mirrors are going to be a part of our kit in that top 10. We can also take a whistle, attach a whistle to a lanyard to that mirror, and now we have an auditory as well as a visual signal. The mirrors, not only a hygiene product, but we can use for signaling, and we can also use this as an improvisational striker for our matches. We just take one of those adhesive strikers, place it on the back of our mirror, and now we have a alternate striking surface to use for our matches. In case we lose our match case or the striker becomes damaged or sodden with water, we can use this alternate striking surface and light our mattress to get a survival fire going or make an actual fire or smoke signal. Next we have those mini chem lights. These are going to be the smaller version of obviously the larger chem lights. But we can take these and they generally last anywhere from six to eight hours. And we can use the infrared chem lights or we can use these colored and visual chem lights not only for seeing in the dark to actually look at our map but we can also use it as a survival signal at nighttime, attaching a piece of cord and then spinning that cord, creating a buzzsaw effect for search and rescue aircraft. And for honorable mention, as not part of the 10, but as part of a signaling kit that we can place inside of our pocket is going to be that strobe. That strobe can go right in our pockets and we can pull it out and use it at nighttime to alert search and rescue aircraft or friendly forces in the area. That IR cover over top gives us an omnidirectional signal that can only be seen under NVGs. We can also remove that cover and create a white light omnidirectional signal. And if we know what direction search and rescue is coming from, we just extend the body with a blue filter over top of the light to create a directional signal for friendly forces.
And lastly, that final item we can have inside of our kit is going to be some sort of cordage that we can place inside of our pockets. We have normal paracord. We have the seven strands on the inside and the sheath on the outside that we can use for a variety of functions. But we can pack a lot of cordage in a smaller container or a smaller size by using type 1 paracord. Type 1 paracord is about 95 pound tensile strength and it's got only one gut inside of it. So we can actually still gut this and create traps or whatever we need to in a smaller package. All right, guys. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for thing you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.